drilling for history. Odysseus was the hero of Troy, the Trojan horse was his idea. But where is Ithaca, his beloved homeland he battled so hard to return to? Until about the 1850s and 60s when Schliemann discovered Troy, people thought that the Iliad was a work of fiction. Now they're not so sure because it describes a real landscape that's been excavated. If it is the case that the Odyssey in the return home to Ithaca also described a real landscape, this is a monumental significance for our understanding of where our culture has come from and what its roots really have been. In that great British tradition of enthusiastic amateurs, Bittleston's eureka moment on a Greek island family holiday has become a theory that could turn classical Greek scholarship on its head. His big idea? Simply take literally Odysseus' description of his homeland in Homer's text. Around are many islands close to each other. Dulichion and Same and wooded Zakynthos. Ithaca itself lies low, furthest to sea towards dusk. The rest apart face dawn and sun. So our three clues are it's low lying, it's furthest out to sea, and it's to the west. And those three clues are either right or they're wrong. And if they're right, then the island usually associated with Odysseus, modern Ithaki, he says simply doesn't fit. It's mountainous, it's not the furthest out to sea, and it faces east. His candidate is Paliki, Kefalonia's low-lying western peninsula. But quite clearly, it's not an island. The breakthrough came from another ancient book, the world's first geography book, written 2,000 years ago by a man called Strabo. Well, Strabo was writing in the early years of the first century AD a geography of the whole known world. And in describing Kefalonia, he makes this remarkable statement that where the island is narrowest, it forms a low isthmus, which is often submerged from sea to sea. That tells us that in the first century BC, there was a navigable passageway between Paliki and the eastern part of Kefalonia. So they're drilling to find it. So that's the back scar exactly. to it. And you can follow those all the way down exactly. here. And then out. For expert advice, really Littleston area, turned to a geologist who studied the region. And, and, and what happened. Initially skeptical, and, and John Underhill's surveys convinced him the channel did the once there. exist. Yeah. Um, but it's been filled in by massive rock falls and landslips. Loose material, easy to drill through. If we hit solid bedrock, which is very well cemented, then that would be bad news for the theory. And this is the great thing about drilling a borehole. It's an ultimate test of a theory. You're going to find out whether you're still on right track or whether you have to go back to the drawing board and, and think again. Rock samples from the borehole will be tested later in the lab analysed and examined to see if they really did come crashing down from the mountains above. But the amount of rock needed is immense. The valley, six kilometres long, rises to 180 metres above the sea. Only catastrophic events could fill that. Like earthquakes, and Kefalonia is Europe's earthquake hotspot. Africa collides with Europe along a fault line through the valley, the route of Strabo's channel. To fill the valley with fallen rocks requires a tremendous force from an earthquake. Well, round here, earthquakes are pretty powerful. Back in 1953, the land here, within the space of a few seconds, was lifted up six metres. The trees up there were once where I'm standing. As Middlestone explored, he stumbled on intriguing signs of past occupation. If this was Ithaca, then Odysseus' fabled city and palace must be somewhere here too. At the time of the Trojan Wars, cities were all about location, location and location. Secure from pirates with water and farmland. The nearby wooded hilltop called Castelli fits the bill. Here he found massive walls, terraces almost to the top. Their date is uncertain, but pottery fragments from the right period are scattered on the summit. 
Uh, we've also found over here there's this very, very flat area that's got unusually strong water features. And on the satellite photo, strange, regular markings. When you walk in this meadow, you don't really see anything you at all. You see nothing there at all. We've done some ground-penetrating radar, and the radar is telling us that there is a definite man-made construction underneath here, almost certainly stone wall. It's quite large, and it's not very deep. So it may be that all we're seeing here are the remains of an early medieval village. But it's just possible that underneath that medieval village there's something else, something much older. After three days and over a hundred metres down, the team reach sea level. But have they found the channel? Well, we, we've now drilled through present-day sea level and we still haven't hit bedrock, we haven't hit the limestone, so very good news for the theory. What we don't know is when this all came down, but at least we know that it did come down and there was sea level unobstructed below this place we're standing on now at some time in the past. Edinburgh, three months later. The sample analysis is complete and it confirms they'd found the buried channel but there was a surprise. The loose material contained tiny fossils of sea creatures where they shouldn't be, some 60 metres above the sea level. It's not something that I would have predicted or, or expected from the result. We but think, how to explain them? We know that there are, there's an unusual amount of seismicity between the 4th and 6th century AD in the Eastern Mediterranean and there are documentary records of tsunamis having affected the Eastern Mediterranean at this time. That is the, the, the most plausible cause at this stage of having marine fossils of the right age, very, very young, that high uh, onto the hillsides. The hypothesis was irresistible from the beginning. The geology has now made it yet more irresistible. I think that it will be accepted that uh, a long-standing enigma has now been solved. We now have almost a route map. We know exactly where we should be looking for an ancient harbour, for an ancient city, even for an ancient palace. All of this material needs further investigation. But I believe if it is investigated in the fullness of time, there will be no doubt that this location was the homeland of a real Odysseus who lived in a real city, a real palace, and had a real kingdom. These results have been a real boost to the team and they're already planning the next step. More geological work to show that the channel did go right the way through this valley and that Western Kefalonia really was once a separate island. Now whether that's the Ithaca of Homer's Odyssey, well that's for the archaeologists to discover when they start digging. But right now the odds look a lot shorter. Julian Rush, Channel 4 News, Kefalonia.